in this video, I'm going to do a deep dive on Runaway's frames. I'll show you why I think it's incredible and how to turn them into insane looking videos. Plus, I'll give you a list of my favorite image styles and how you can create your own using any image. Okay, let's get into it. So let's jump straight into Runaway and try out frames. So as you can see here on the right, there are loads of different examples of the kinds of images that you can create. So if you hover over them and click on one, it will add the prompt into the prompt box. And if you come down here, you can see they've added loads of different custom styles. And as you can see, there are loads of different ones to choose from. All of the ones without the images on them are my custom made image styles. And I'll show you how to create these soon. Now you don't have to pick any of these if you don't want to. And we also have aesthetic range. Now what this does, the higher the number increases the variation between each generated image. And the default is set at two. And by clicking this, you can also change the aspect ratio. So let's test out this prompt without any style selected. So here are the images from the prompt with a no style added to it. And they look really good. They've got a kind of cinematic look to them. I could easily see any of these images being used on a magazine cover. Now I'll try the same prompt, but with aesthetic range maxed out at five. So these are the results when the aesthetic range was set to five. And as you can see, each one of the four images is in a completely different style. If you want to experiment with finding different styles, I definitely recommend pushing the aesthetic range up to five. So here are a few more examples of that same prompt, but in different styles. This is that prompt, but using the 3D cartoon style. And they definitely have that kind of CGI Pixar look to them. And here's that prompt using the light anime style. They all definitely look like they're straight out of an anime show, which is pretty cool. And here are the images with the in motion style. So this style just kind of adds a bit more dynamic motion to the images. This one up here doesn't really show much motion. But the other three have some subtle motion in them. And it's a pretty cool style to play around with. And here's the same prompt, but with my own custom style, which is going for that watercolor painting look. And I'm really impressed with how they've come out. You can even see the paper texture coming through on the images, and I'm really impressed. And here's a Squid Game inspired image, which I tried in different styles. And as you can see, it's keeping the composition the same, but the style changes drastically. And I'm really impressed with all the different styles. Now let's have a quick talk about how to structure your prompt. Runway do suggest to follow this prompt structure. So they say to put your art style, then your subject, your scene, your lighting, and then your color. This just gives you loads of flexibility to really tailor your images. So I'll try this structure with a simple prompt and then with a more detailed prompt, and we'll see if they look any different. So this is my simple prompt and I've broken it up. So we've got my art style, which is a cinematic photo, the subject, which is a fox, and in the scene, which is in the snow, and then the lighting, and then the color. So I'll try this, then I'll try a more detailed prompt. The images for the basic prompt look pretty good to be honest. There is nothing wrong with them. But if you really want to add a bit more detail, then try a more detailed prompt. And here is the more detailed prompt. So as you can see, I've added a lot more information to really tailor the prompt to exactly how I want it. So if you're not getting the images that you're wanting, then definitely add more detail into the prompt. And the images for the detailed prompt look great. Pretty much exactly what I was looking for. Compared to the basic prompt, I think they're very similar, but I think the detailed prompt results do look better. Just a quick interruption here. If you're enjoying this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Okay, back to the video. Now let's have a look at creating your own custom styles. So when you click on styles, come up to this plus icon here and it will pop up with this box. Then all you have to do is describe your style in this prompt box and give it a title. So to start off with, I'll try something simple. So I want to create a pencil sketch style and I've added in some information of what I want the style to look like and make sure to give it an appropriate title. 
Then you'll see the new custom style you've just created inside the styles box here. So I'm going to try this new style with the same detailed prompt of the fox. You may be wondering why don't I just write a sketch of a fox in the prompt box here? Well, you can do that, but it does make it easier having these custom style profiles set down here, as you're just able to click on any of them, and it will change the image depending on which style you click on, instead of writing in the style all the time in this prompt box. And the results look awesome. They've come out looking like a pencil sketch, and they look great. I am really happy with how this style has turned out. So you can create styles like that, but I also have another method which I think is really fun to do. I discovered a really good process. I found this website which contains loads of different Midjourney prompt styles. Midjourney is just another website which allows you to generate AI images. So this website I found just contains loads of different art styles and the prompts they use to generate the image. So what I did is I went through the website and found the styles that I really like. Once you find the style that you like, all you have to do is click and save the image. And then I take that image into ChatGPT, upload the image, and then I ask ChatGPT to explain the art style and not the subject matter. So hopefully it should give me a description of that style. Okay, great. So it's given me a detailed description of that art style. So all you have to do is copy that and go back into Runway. Then you just paste that description into the prompt style box and give it a title. So I'll try the same prompt but with that new style. The images using this watercolor style look really good. It reminds me of the art you would see in a children's book. So I've actually made a document containing all of my favorite styles. If you want to download that free document, you can find a link to it in the description down below. Now let's have a look how well it works with text. So I've done a few tests and I can say it is really good at interpreting text prompts. So here are a few examples. So for this one, I wanted a theater with neon lights and it to say runway frames, and it's done an incredible job at putting the text into the scene. You can get creative with your text. So in this one, I wanted the text to be inflatable metallic balloons. And in this one, I put the word atomic onto a sports like t-shirt. It's a great way to get ideas for products. Like in this image here, I wanted to create a cover for a children's book with the title Arlo is Lost. And I'm pretty blown away by the results. In the prompt, I added I wanted the book to be on a wooden floor. And I'm very impressed with how it came out. And in this one, I wanted to create a kind of product photography shot with a perfume called Frames. And it looks incredibly realistic. And here is a mock-up for a soda called Fizz. And it's even added all the water texture over the text as well. And here I prompted it to create a sci-fi movie poster called Frames. So you can get really creative with using text in runway frames. Now let's have a look at taking these frame images and turning them into videos. So I'm going to use this image as an example. And all you have to do is click on this use button with the little video icon on it. For this example, I'm just going to leave the description blank and see what Runway does with it. And here's the result. I think it looks incredible. It does a really good job at kind of making it feel like it's an actual 3D space. And it's great that the text stays consistent throughout the whole video. So here's another example of this portrait shot of this woman. And I put into the prompt static camera, lady smiles, slow motion and the resulting video looks incredibly realistic. It's added in some really nice subtle motion. And I love the shot here of this weird hologram man I created, and the video is really wacky. It's got some really lifelike lighting, and the animation on the weird light person is pretty unique and looks kind of realistic. And I really love this video that I created from this image. It noticed that some of the image is blurred out, so it interprets it as a fast-moving drone-like shot. And I think it looks incredible. It feels like the drone is flying really close to the ground, just passing through all this grass, and I'm very impressed. Feel free to play around with the camera motion options as well. So for this example, I will just choose to add a bit of zoom, and then some verticality. So as you can see, the shot should zoom in and then rise up. 
and let's see what it does. And the resulting video looks great. It's done exactly what I added into the camera control. So as you can see, it's zooming in and rising upwards. So make sure to use this camera control for extra control of your video. And you can also add in the prompt to refine it even further. So now I want to show you how Frames is really good at working with Runway's facial animation tool, Act 1. With Act 1, you can use your facial performance to put onto a character of your choice. So for this prompt, I've just generated a man in a 3D cartoon style. And then all you have to do is click Use, and then go down to Act 1. And then you add in your driving performance video here. I've actually got some pre-recorded videos of myself from another video I did on Act 1, so I'm going to use that as an example. And then download the image of the character that you want to add the animation onto, and click on Upload, and drag that in. So once you've got your driving video and your image loaded in, just click Generate. So let's see how that looks. Hello everyone, and welcome to Runway's Act 1. This is a test to see how well it works. Is it working? How does it look? Does my face look okay? And that looked amazing. So this is a fantastic method of creating your own character using frames and then animating it with your own performance. As you can see in this video, the background is a bit static. So if you want to add a bit more motion into it, then another method you can do is take your image and turn it into a video. And then we can use that video with Act 1 as well. So I'll show you how to do it. So just click on Use. So I've just added into the prompt, the background is animated. And hopefully it should just add a bit of movement into the background. Okay, so this video is a bit more animated. So I'll take this into Act 1. So I'll go to Act 1, so just click on Upload, and I'll drag in the video that I just created, and click Generate. So as you can see with the original one, it adds a bit more motion into the overall shot. So definitely have a play around with creating your own character using frames, and turning it into an animated character using Act 1. Okay, so we've reached the end of this video, and I hope you can see just how fun and useful frames can be. It's a great way to generate ideas and to create your own custom styles. If you have any tips or tricks with using frames, then please leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you would like to see one of our other videos, then feel free to click on the image you can see on screen right now. Thanks for watching.